This is Witch Based News for Friday the 10th of June 2022. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week Update 12 lands bringing joy and pain in near equal measure. There's a new essential third party application for Odyssey settlement missions and is Professor Palin building a hybrid alien ship? To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. Perhaps unsurprisingly last weeks gold rush community goal to resupply the Golconda megaship in Upaniklis ended very early when the money hose that accompanied deliveries of tritium to fuel the megaships newly installed frameshift drive finally dried up. Over the course of what was an extended bank holiday weekend in the UK at least the CG saw obscene amounts of wealth being generated by those prepared to put in the hauling mileage necessary and this week we've seen more than a few celebratory posts from commanders who are the new proud owners of 5 billion credits worth of movable space city fleet carriers. This week Professor Ishmael Palin is back and all up in your grill looking to gather more bits stolen from, sawn off of or otherwise explosively removed from Thargoids all in the name of scientific study. In this latest CG he's recommending the use of corrosive resistant cargo racks which were a reward from the last community outing hosted by the bubbles favourite alien dismembering mad scientist. The cargo racks are being recommended because this time around he's after vast quantities of Thargoid probes, resin and sensors all of which are highly corrosive See what he did there? to be delivered to Baird Gateway in the Ark system. As well as the usual cash incentive he's also offering either 4D or 5D heavy duty hull reinforcement packages as a nice sweetener. Quite what the murder marigolds themselves will make of all this is anyone's guess but if you're hauling any significant distances you can likely expect a high prediction or two. This is the second phase of an ongoing series of actions for the professor and we're assuming all this study is going somewhere for some reason. If you're a newer player to the game you might not be aware of the professors history with Thargoid experimentation but you'll likely hear a lot of tinfoil rustling going on from the longer term players who doubtless remember the Orthrus incident that took place in the Maya system in 3305. We made a video recapping the incident last year which you'll find linked on screen now. But in summary for a short period in 2019 players who arrived at Palin's previous place of work in that system the Palin Institute surface installation were treated to a fleeting glance of a previously unseen and not since seen Thargoid like vessel called the Orthrus. I say Thargoid like whilst it was undoubtedly Thargoid in appearance the vessel had some distinctly human like components on board if you could get close enough to scan it before it jumped away. As you can imagine at the time the speculationometer went off the scale as talk of human hybrid Thargoid vessels exploded onto the community. The encounter disappeared as quickly as it had arrived and it seems at this point that the incident was probably behind the scenes development work that made it into the game accidentally but whatever the reason for its appearance it's now part of legendary player lore if nothing else. Palin is clearly up to something still as his caustic coleslaw experiments are continuing and it seems gaining momentum if he's demanding yet more sackloads of alien goop from the player base. Where this all ends we don't yet know. Is it tied to Salvation's frantic stick waggling? Again that's unknown but it seems unlikely that two Thargoid antagonizing events of such a scale are entirely unrelated. The community goal runs until next Thursday unless it's completed by the community early. A new third party app for Elite Dangerous Odyssey has been launched this week and it's set to become an essential tool for new and experienced alike when tackling Odyssey's many surface based settlement encounters. 
The Odyssey Map Guide or OMG by Commander Quiz Engine provides an overhead top down view of every single known settlement type in the game and provides locations for the different building types, security doors as well as their access levels and the location of the alarms control console. It also provides numerous pro tips on gaining access to a settlement that are all custom written for that settlement type specifically. If you're wondering where you might steal an NPCs access level through a convenient window while perched on a ledge outside ...OMG will tell you. The application is currently entirely browser based meaning there's no download or installation required. Just click the link and off you go. If you're looking to tackle the more subtle aspects of Odyssey's surface missions that require a bit more stealth and guile then Quiz Engine's OMG is absolutely the must have bible for the stealthy saboteur, assassin or thief. You'll find a link in the video description below and we're adding the application to the permanent list of useful links that we maintain in the description of every episode of Witchspace News. As we reported earlier this week update 12 landed in Elite Dangerous on Wednesday and now that the dust has settled somewhat from that landing we're starting to get a clearer picture of the effect it's had. The one thing that has been a consistent feature of Elite Dangerous Odyssey has been the inconsistency of the player base experience. Some people rarely see any serious issues whilst others, oftentimes with more powerful PCs, have no end of problems and this is proving to be the case yet again in update 12. We've had numerous reports of very dramatic framerate improvement in traditionally poor framerate areas such as surface settlements and starport interiors and in particular these reports were very apparent from those running systems at the lower end of the power spectrum. This was great to hear and obviously very encouraging. However ...you knew there'd be a however right? We're also seeing reports of and indeed experiencing ourselves dramatic dips in performance in those same areas to the point where some certain planets and zones are completely unplayable and there seems to be no logical reason for the performance dips. Of particular note is a stuttering issue on some planet surfaces both around and away from settlements that was quickly picked up in the forums and we also had reports from multiple commanders in our discord seeing the same thing. I've linked below to an issue tracker report for the problem that has become somewhat of a catch all and that report has already been acknowledged by Frontier and is available for upvoting in the system if you wish to contribute. At the time of recording there are also some issues around the anaconda that have sprung up. It seems it's now reluctant to land on even the flattest of planet surfaces, oftentimes even with auto land engaged. Elsewhere, having spent some more time tackling the new Omni Police settlement defence raids myself and seeing reports from within our own community I can confirm they are indeed much tougher than the previous iteration of the settlement raid. They also come with weighty rewards, oftentimes material based so if you're looking to gather something in particular this could be a way forward for you. I'd highly recommend taking a team if attempting them for maximum chance of success. Killing the Omni Popo that frequent the new raid also comes with some significant combat rank including standard combat rank if you're working towards elite there. One note of caution if the owner of the mission gets killed it seems to fail the mission for everyone in the team currently. We're not sure if that's working as intended or not. If it is it seems somewhat unnecessarily punitive but look out for it either way. Patch day always brings its share of niggles and issues. It's inevitable with such a huge and complex game and is indeed something I've seen with every live service game and MMO I've ever played and it's likely these smaller issues will be fixed in the coming days. What's more concerning are the problems with inconsistency in frame rates that FDev are clearly still wrestling with over a year since the expansion launched. I won't pretend to understand the complexities of game development at this level or how deployment of such a thing would have knock on effects elsewhere but with such a diverse and oftentimes mature and enthusiastic player base at hand I can't help thinking a public beta or two might go some way to avoiding the more serious issues before they're rolled into the main game in future. I hope Frontier will consider this as an option going forward. Are you going to be assisting Professor Palin with his collection of Thargoid entrails? How was update 12 for you and have you found Quiz Engine's OMG app useful? Let us know in the comments below. 
That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.